Yo guys, what is good? Welcome back to the Uncle Sharma channel here today for a little bit of a different topic away from Serie A, away from Inter, but technically still related to Inter, of course, and that is Antonio Conte to Spurs. Antonio Conte to Spurs. My goodness, uh, I'm not going to lie. I did not expect this to happen and uh, I've been taken by surprise by this move and uh, even when in the summer it was linked Antonio Conte was going to Spurs I didn't believe it I didn't think that was going to happen but Spurs have managed to pull it off Fabio Paratici have managed to pull this off so first of all congratulations to Spurs because you guys have got the best league coach in the world uh, and that's my opinion but I think it's quite hard to argue that opinion not many guys can touch Antonio Conte when it comes to winning league titles Juventus Inter Chelsea this guy is just certified winner when it comes to league titles yes we know he's got that dodgy European record but league title wise you can't talk to this guy I mean first of all as an Interista reading Conte's words today in his uh, first interview with Spurs I mean this guy he's, he's trying to make us cry he, he's tugging on the heartstrings he said today last summer our union did not happen because the end of my relationship with inter was still too recent and emotionally too involved with the end of the season so i felt it wasn't yet the right time to return to coaching i mean antonio <laughs> as an interista the main question that comes to my mind is why is this the project that he's chosen after inter is this is, does he feel like this is a better project than inter i mean coming of a Scudetto winning campaign of, after two years of Inter and Sunin giving Antonio Conte pretty much whatever he wanted. Yes, there was a big doubts about Sunin in terms of the ownership and Inter, you know, um, having to sell players, Hakimi Lukaku, of course. But then the team is still at a good uh, in a good place. And of course, the main question mark that always comes with the Spurs job and Pochettino will tell you that, Jose Mourinho will tell you that, Daniel Levy, and I just don't see... Antonio Conte and Daniel Levy working out as a you know working relationship. Daniel Levy has a reputation for being cheap and not spending much money. I like to call him the English Claudio Lotito, the Lazio president who is very similar in terms of his spending habits. And Antonio Conte as a manager, the demands he has not only for his players, we know that for his players on the pitch he demands 110% commitment, hard work you know fully being committed to the cause but not just the players he does that with the directors with the managers with anyone that's involved at the club he wants 110 percent commitment and obsession just like he is when he chooses a job which he always is that's a guarantee with Antonio Conte but we've seen in the past as well the guy can throw tantrums the guy has very specific and you know sometimes very expensive demands in the transfer market and Daniel Levy has a track record of not backing his managers in the transfer market. So how the hell is this going to work? And that leads me to the next question is what did Paratici promise him? Like this guy must have promised Antonio Conte the moon and he must deliver Antonio Conte the moon because Antonio Conte will gladly leave the job if he's not delivered or exactly what he was being promised. You know, so well done to Paratici for using his contact with Conte, his relationship with Conte, because obviously Paratici worked with Conte at Juventus so clearly that working relationships obviously speaking Italian they know each other that must have been a big you know part of the deal to convince Conte to come the salary of course is rumored that he's going to be earning around 15 million pounds sterling pounds so he's, he looks like he's getting an upgrade from his inter deal as well and it's only an 18 month deal which is another question mark in terms of you know clearly this seems like a, a short term option on both sides i mean they're both kind of going in half-hearted with only an 18 month contract however there is an option to extend that so i guess that kind of covers that question but those are really the the, the main questions that come to mind in terms of uh, fit cultural fit into spurs is antonio conte the guy but in terms of appointment for spurs these guys have got the best guy for the job the thanos of league titles as i like to call him and i think there's going to be lots of winners in that squad i think that squad isn't the best in the Premier League for sure it's not you know one of the elite squads but it's not a bad squad for sure it has been you know put together quite well and that's why you know Nuno had to go because the performances just weren't good enough I think there could be potential a lot of winners within uh, within the Tottenham squad with Conte's appointment because Conte is a talent maximizer he's a guy that does improve players if they're willing to commit and listen to him you know the likes of Kane the likes of Lucas Moura the likes of Tanganga 
you know, being that kind of hybrid center back who's also can play as a fullback, being one of the three center backs. Cuti Romero, Christian Romero, having played in the back three at Atlanta in the middle of the three, I think he's gonna, you know, thrive under Conte. I think Conte is gonna love Cuti Romero. Ben Davies, once again, being a similar profile to kind of like a Azpilicueta type center back to how Conte converted Azpilicueta to one of the three center backs as well. I see potential for that. The wing backs, especially someone like Reguillon, we've seen Conte. This is probably my favorite thing about Conte. I like to call him the wing back whisperer. We've, we've seen that if you're Inter fan, you've seen what he did at, uh, you know, Inter with Ashley Young, with Matteo Darmian, uh, Ivan Perisic, Biragi, you know, all these types of kind of what you would call average players, just elevating them to 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 the next level. We've seen that we did we did that with Italy as well with De Chilio, Darmian once again there as well, Victor Moses at Chelsea. You know, Marcos Alonso. He takes wing backs to the next level because they're such an important part of his uh, system and the way he coaches the the, the memorized movements and the, the simplifying the game for the wing backs. He he manages to take these guys to the next level. So someone like uh, Reguillon. I can definitely see thriving. In midfield, Ndombele was strongly linked with Inter as well at one point uh, when Antonio Conte was here. You know, a ball carrying midfielder who has some question marks over his work rate and, you know, his commitment to football in general. But if he does listen to Conte, if he does get his act together, he could be a massive, massive threat under Antonio Conte. Similarly, Giovanni Lo Celso as well. I could see him being converted into maybe one of the three centre midfielders if Antonio Conte decides to run a 3-5-2 like he did at Inter. And maybe we could see that type of Victor Moses type of conversion with one of the wingers. Maybe, you know, Steven Bergwijn, who has been, you know, a big flop for Spurs since he signed. Um, you know, he could have the potential to be converted into a wing back. We never know with Conte what he did with Perisic was absolute magic. Uh, maybe even Lucas Moura, we, you never know with Conte who he could convert to wing back. So that's definitely one to keep an eye on. In terms of losers in the in this possible deal, uh, Daniel Levy's pockets, first of all, they're, they're going to be massive losers. I mean, I mean, Conte doesn't necessarily always spend a lot of money. We've seen, especially Inter last year when he didn't actually have that much money to spend. He probably did better than he did in the first year. But Daniel Levy's pockets are going to be a little bit lighter, a little bit more empty for sure with Conte's appointment in terms of the salary that he's been given as well. I think Dele Ali potentially could be a good fit, but character-wise, you know, here in Dombele is all, well, there could be some sort of clash there in terms of, you know, what Conte wants in terms of 100% commitment and, you know, focus on football. But overall, I think the squad, as I said, is a good fit. And I think I can see him running, you know, a 3-4-2-1 or a 3-5-2. Hoybierg being kind of, you know, the, the the pivot of the kind of the Brozovic role as well. I can see that happening for sure. And then the question that Inter fans are probably most interested in is like, who's this guy going to come and steal off us now? You know, obviously Inter is going to be the, the team that he's going to look at after having coached Inter for two years and being a fan of many players for sure. And with Inter's financial situation, that he's going to look at some players at Inter and probably number one, on the list and the rumors are coming out today that you know Stefan de Vrij has already been uh, contacted or Mino Raiola has already been contacted by Spurs for a potential move to Spurs um, you know de Vrij has been you know one of the best center backs at uh, in the Serie A the last few years his contract has you know a year and a half left on it and he hasn't been renewed yet so you know at his age who's 29 30 years old Mino Raiola as his agent you could see that move potentially happening. And for the Inter fans, out of the three centre-backs, I think that would be the least painful sale as well, you know, because of his advancing age compared to the other two, his expiring contract. I think out of the Bastoni, Skriniar and De Vrij, De Vrij is probably the one that we could sacrifice. The other guy that obviously we need to keep an eye on, again, because of his expiring contract, but his has only got a few, you know, six or seven months left now, Marcelo Brozovic. Um, which is probably not the most, um, you know, high priority position for Spurs in the, in the, when you look at the squad. But if Brozovic is available and he hasn't signed a contract still, Antonio Conte's phone call to Brozovic, who, you know, Conte really liked Brozovic. I could see that potentially happening and, you know, financially very viable for Spurs to land him on a free transfer and, you know, probably, you know, double his wages. Alessandro Bastoni, of course, uh, we spoke about the Vrij, but Bastoni is such a unique profile in world football. There's not many great centre-backs out there in general these days, but left 
left-footed ball-playing centre-backs as well, specifically, especially if you're going to play a back three. You're not going to find much better than Bastoni. But that one is going to cost you a lot. Spurs, Daniel Levy, Conte. That one, he will fight you tooth and nail. He has to be a big, big price tag. You know, we're talking about potentially world record fee for trying to get Alessandro Bastoni off Inter. Skriniar was also linked in the past with Spurs. We know they even, you know, put a bid in for, for, for Skriniar in the past. So I wouldn't be surprised if they're linked with him. Another surprise one that maybe people haven't thought about, even Perisic, because again, his expiring contract. Yes, he's 32 years old. But we've seen with Conte, he doesn't really care about age. And especially with someone like Perisic, who's a true professional, takes care of his body, um, has managed to convert to wing back pretty much permanently now. I think I think he realizes as well that he's his best position now and in his advancing years. It looks like he doesn't want to renew his contract, unlike Brozovic, who is looking to renew his contract. Perisic apparently reportedly has said that he doesn't want to renew his contract. He wants to try something different. He's wanted to move through Premier League in the past. He was very close to Arsenal, Man United. So Spurs, I can see Spurs being finally his move uh, into the Premier League and under back under Antonio Conte. And maybe, you know, once again, they did, uh, according to most the reports in the summer, officially pretty much that they did put in a bid for Lautaro. I don't know if that was related to them expecting to sell Harry Kane, but Lautaro has signed a new contract, but that does not mean that, you know, if for the right price, he isn't for sale. And if, uh, you know, if they do sell Harry Kane or if they do come in with a serious 80, 90 million offer for Lautaro, I think he will be sold. So, and we know Conte is a big, big fan of Lautaro. But again, I don't think that's a priority position for them, especially I can see Son Heung Ming being converted into the second striker position like Lautaro, or if they're going to play a 3-4-2-1, then they're probably going to go for a bigger striker, you know, the likes of uh, the Lukaku or the Vlahovic type profile. Uh, to replace Harry Kane if he does leave. But Antonio Conte, I think, will try his best to convince to keep Harry Kane because he is a world-class striker. And I think Antonio Conte being the manager there now, the coach now can revive on Harry Kane's career, who uh, is a, stalling a little bit now. But yeah, guys, those were my thoughts on Antonio Conte to Spurs. You guys let me know in the comments below, even if you're not an Interista, what do you make of this move, Antonio Conte to Spurs? Do you think he's going to win? the Premier League title within the contract uh, time that he has at Spurs or is this uh, a flop move all around? Um, who, who's the player that you think are going to strive under him and which Inter players are you worried about him stealing from here Inter? Let me know in the comments below. Make sure you leave a thumbs up and subscribe if you're new to the channel. Ciao ragazzi. Forza Inter. Forza Conte.